In just about one month, February 19th, we will be narrowing the field of Madison mayoral candidates down to two in the primary election. So before that, we're going to get you prepared by interviewing a whole bunch of them. Today, we're interviewing Satya Rhodes-Conway on this special election edition of the Madsplainers. I'm Lisa speckard pask and I'm the Metro Reporter. I'm Eric Lawrenson, and I'm a tech reporter. I'm Abby Becker, and I cover city and county government. And this is the Madsplainers. On today's election episode of the Mad Splainers, we chatted with Satya Rhodes Conway. She's a former alder and she represented parts of the east and north sides of Madison, so from about East High School to Warner Park, um, that was the district she represented. She is currently the managing director of the Mayor's Innovation Project through the Center on Wisconsin Strategy. Funny story, I actually interned with the Center on Wisconsin Strategy way back when, when I was a little, little college junior, and yeah, I actually distinctly remember remember editing and formatting some of those policy memos that, that Satya was responsible for. Yeah, it's a small world. Yeah, so through her job, she deals a lot with mayors um, in cities across the country um, and with different municipalities. So she joined us this morning, um, and we had a chat about her race for Madison mayor. <laughs> bit about yourself you know what brought you to Madison Um, uh, and and yeah just kind of go from there sure well I moved to Madison almost 20 years ago Um, I came for an internship Uh, I had been in grad school in uh, Irvine California and was living in Long Beach and um, teaching I was a a biology lecturer um, and looking for something new so I got an internship here it was with an organization working on state level environmental policy which doesn't exist anymore, but it was a great job. Um, And I was here for about a month, and I have this vivid memory. I was walking down State Street on a Saturday morning um, right after going to the farmer's market, and it was a game day, and I was like, man, I don't ever want to leave. (laughs) All the classic Madison things. I know. It's just like I love this place, you know, and and, – um, and so I went and talked to my boss, and I said, look, I love it here. I love this work, and would you please hire me? And he said, you know, I've been thinking about that. And so I talked my way into a job, and then I ended up uh, at UW, where I work now, and um, I've been here ever since. Was there anything in particular, you know, about Madison that really tipped the scales for you? I mean, you talk about that one moment, but um, but I guess reflecting back, anything yeah. in particular that pushed you over the edge? I mean, to me, it was the quality of life, right? So was, I had... I was renting a room in an apartment in a duplex. It was like, you know, totally like intern salary, right? Right. But um, um, over on the east side and um, just, yeah, the neighborhoods and the tree-lined streets and the lakes and the fact that I could walk or bike or take the bus to work. And, I mean, the the contrast to L.A. traffic was dramatic. You know, and just like the opportunities and the arts and the food. And it was just so much going on. I really loved it. And it took me a while to realize – um, that that opportunity isn't available to everyone. Um, and that's part of why I'm running for mayor is because I want everyone to have the kind of opportunities I had here in Madison. Mm-hmm. Well, that was uh, my next question. You know, what inspired you to run for mayor? You know, after um, I moved here, it uh, probably took me a couple of years, but I got involved in local politics and ended up running for city council and served for six years. Um, and then in my day job at UW, I run a project uh, for mayors and their senior staff from all over the country. We do research, writing, technical assistance. Um, I mean, it's a learning network. So mayors call me up and ask me city policy questions. And um, so between those two things, uh, I really have a grounding in how cities work and, mm-hmm. and what mayors need to do. There's a, a set of issues and problems and challenges that Madison's facing that I don't see us working on enough uh, or fast enough. And um, I'm not the kind of person who wants to sit back and you know tell other people what to do or how they should do it. I'm the kind of person that wants to step up and um, dig in and let's get the work done. And so what are those issues that, that you see Madison not working on? Well, so our, our housing market for one, um, we have an affordable housing crisis here. And, um, you know, I I was able to, well, after I moved out of that room, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I moved into a bigger apartment and then I was able to buy a house. And I, when I think about 
you know, my salary then and um, what the house cost and how I was able to put that together, I don't think somebody like me could buy my house today. You know, and that that's a closing off of opportunity that really worries me. And I want Madison to be the kind of place where, you know, nurses and teachers and firefighters and baristas and, um, you know, all sorts of folks can come here and thrive and afford to live. And um, and that's not true right now. So and it's becoming increasingly less true. So, yeah, the city's doing some things on affordable housing, but not nearly enough. And we need to do a lot more um, and we need to move faster. Um, so that's one thing. Um, rapid transit is another thing. Um, and then obviously we have deep racial disparities here in Madison, which are you know shameful and embarrassing. And I don't see us working on that enough. Um, and then finally, as we saw earlier this year with the flooding, uh, we're not prepared for climate change. And we have to be. Um, the city has not done, as far as I can tell, any kind of comprehensive review of what the impacts of climate change will be on our infrastructure and operations. And it's coming whether we're ready or not. So we'd better be ready. Yeah, and I know after um, that, those rains in August, I mean, that was a, a huge concern. I mean, and it still is. And I think during um, and while that was all happening, I think your campaign came out with a platform and specific steps regarding that. Yeah, I have been thinking a lot about it. In fact, um, we've been working on it at the Mayor's Innovation Project, which is the project okay. that I run um, for probably five years now. So I've been working with a whole range of different cities across the country and um, learning from what they're doing and helping them to do more and better um, on stormwater management. Um, so cities like Philadelphia, which are really cutting edge in terms of both their street design, um, but also their stormwater regulation and how they manage it and the, um, the set of different tools they make available to property owners um, to better manage stormwater. Also places like Portland, Oregon, or Syracuse, New York, or um, I mean, there's a whole long list of places that are working on this that are doing, frankly, I think a much better job um, than Madison is doing. We have a lot to learn and we have a lot of work to do. And but, but the good news is it's not out of our reach. We can do this, right? This is all possible. Um, but we need somebody, uh, a leader, who can make it happen. Well, so jumping back a bit, you were alder from 07 to 2012, I believe, um, representing parts of East and North Side. So like 2013. 2013. Spring 2013. Okay, good. <laughs> Live fact-checking in action. Uh, what did you, I guess, learn as alder that has sort of shaped your views in your run for mayor? Boy, I learned a ton. I mean, being all there was a great experience, um, and I hope that I was able to serve my district really well. I certainly um, got good feedback from my constituents. And um, some of the things I learned were how important it is to collaborate with people when you want to get something done. Um, so working with um, other alders, obviously there's 20 folks on the council, and um, in order to pass anything, you need at least 11 votes. So you have to work with your colleagues, um, and that's sort of naturally my style anyway. So, but, but having that reinforced that collaboration is important was uh, a very important thing for me. And then I also learned the importance of collaborating with staff. Um, because staff are the ones that are going to implement anything uh, that get passed. And um, I saw a lot of cases where um, people had not talked to staff first and things did not go well. And so I learned pretty quickly that uh, I wanted to include the folks who are doing the work, but also the folks that are most impacted by whatever the issue is in the process of crafting the policy and how it's going to be implemented. So that's a big thing that I took away um, from being on the city council. I want to talk a little bit about your work. I'm, I'm fascinated by your role, mainly be just because I cover local government, and I feel like I, um, I'm always curious what other local municipalities are up to or, you know, how they address problems. Could you just say, you know, what your title is and what, um, wh where you work and just give a brief explanation of, of what that all is? Sure. So I'm the managing director of the Mayor's Innovation Project, which is a national learning network for mayors and their senior staff focused on the high road of equity, sustainability, and democracy. We're based at UW. And we work with mayors and senior staff from all across the country on a whole range of policy issues. Basically, anything they're interested in, we'll work on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we research, we write, we put on peer learning events, we do technical assistance, we have cohorts of cities and mayors that are working on different issues. Um, so it's a, a whole range. It's a great job, I have to say. Um, but it's, we are really like in the weeds of city policy. 
um, every day. And and it might be a different thing each day. You know, so in the course of a week, I might be looking at stormwater management or um, bus stop design or how you start a farmer's market or how you use behavioral science um, in the course of crafting city policy. Um, I recently wrote a memo for uh, Burlington, Vermont, on um, how they can encourage early and growth stage companies. Um, so it's, you know, it's really a whole range. It runs the gamut. Yeah. 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 And all sorts of cities, too, which is really exciting for me because it's it's it is really all across the country. Um, and it might be, you know, a really successful place. Um, you know, we do actually have worked with New York City a little bit or um, Boston, um, South Bend, Indiana, Oak Park Hill. I mean, you know, just across the board. Grand Rapids, Michigan doing great, you know, or it might be a really challenged place. Like we've recently been working with the mayor of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, which is a really small town in the Mon Valley next to Pittsburgh. And they have some really deep um, financial challenges and there's been mismanagement in the past. And the newly elected mayor came to us and said, help, what can I do? And I'm trying to do all the right things, but there's so much. And, you know, we have really dug in and um, we're, we're there with her and we're helping her figure out her problems and how to move forward. Yeah. So, I mean, you're dealing with a range of issues. Um, I'm curious if there's any, you know, big kind of trend issues that, you know, cities that you work with are dealing with or that you're seeing come up, you know, more often. Yes. And, and I'll tell you a little bit what I think they are. But the truth is that mayors have to deal with everything all the time. And so um, they are the mayors that we work with are just sort of constantly interested in wanting to learn a lo- across a whole range of issues. Um, but that said, um, we do hear regularly about climate and climate change and how to be prepared and how to mitigate and reduce emissions. That's a, a definite theme. Um, we're hearing more and more about racial equity and mayors wanting to really understand how they advance that in their cities. Um, and we hear a lot about infrastructure um, and, of course, how to pay for everything. Um, that's a common theme. Um, but also recently, mayors are struggling with how to address the opioid epidemic. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one of the sort of common problems I hear from folks. Um, and we're doing – we're hearing a lot about, um, you know, as the boomers age, how do cities need to adapt – um, and what does that mean both for infrastructure but also for the workforce um, and what kind of amenities are needed and infrastructure um, adaptations as people become sort of less mobile or um, want to age in place or, you know, so there's a lot of things, sort of nationwide trends that cities are dealing with um, that we have conversations about. So in the past when you've been working with mayors in these cities, did you ever think in the back of your head, oh, I want to be a mayor. I want to do this. I want to lead the city I live in someday. Honestly, no. What I was thinking was, why don't we do this in Madison? Why aren't we working on that really cool thing? Or what, you know, why isn't that technology here? Or why don't we have bus rapid transit? Or why can't we do green infrastructure? And um, so it's it was less about me wanting to be mayor and more about like, why can't Madison have nice things? <laughs> you know, like, why are we not doing these cutting edge things here here in the city that I love? And And that's really the motivation for me is that I want Madison to be, you know, one of the best city in the country. And I want us to be doing uh, the the best and most progressive policies um, and the things that that will make people's lives better here. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so we talked about several areas that um, you know that, that you want to work on, you know, if elected as mayor. But I'm curious, you know, if you see, you know, sort of what the you know the single greatest challenge Madison Madison is facing might be. You know, it's really tough to pick one because um, I, you know there really are. I think, uh, you know, three or four big ones um, that we're facing. So certainly climate, nobody can ignore that. Um, Racial equity, huge deal for us. Um, But if you if you force me to pick, I think I would have to pick the, the housing and transit combination. Right. Because if people can't afford to live in Madison um what's the point of working on other things, right? Like we, we want to be a city, I think, where people can afford to live. And right now we're headed in the wrong direction on that. I think affordable housing is probably our biggest challenge. And that's very closely tried to, tied to transit. If you look from like a household budget point of view, right, the cost of housing, the cost of transportation are very closely tied. And so I think we need to work on both. 
Well, so we have an interesting field of candidates and, you know, obviously the incumbent Mayor Paul Soglin. And so I, I would like to know, you know, what, what you think sets yourself apart from the rest of the field. Honestly, I do think that it's my experience, right? I, I was on the council for six years and I'm currently appointed to the Madison Food Policy Council. I just wrapped up a term serving as chair of the Oscar Mayer Strategic Assessment Committee, um, which is a great experience. And then, you know, my day job really does put me in contact with mayors and good ideas and city policies from all across the country. And, um, you know, I, there are other folks running who have experience here in Madison, um, but there's nobody running who has experience looking at these challenges across the board, all across this country, in all sorts of cities, um, and can learn from what's going on. I mean, mayors literally call me up and ask me for advice. So I think that that sets me apart, and I'll be able to bring all of that, all of those resources, all those connections, all that knowledge to the mayor's office. Well, let's get to it then. Um, Our lightning round questions, these are meant to uh, be quick and fast, say what comes to your mind first. Um, These are uh, Eric and Lisa and I, um, my fellow co-hosts of this podcast, came up with these questions are very, um, we feel that they're very Madison themed and fun. So I'm excited to hear your answers. Excellent. All right. So number one, what's your favorite festival in Madison? Oh, gosh. How do you choose (laughs) one? (laughs) Um, Coming at you with those tough questions. I think probably, are they still calling them Central Park Sessions? Um, Yeah, I think probably the Central Park Sessions. All right, number two, what's your favorite sandwich in Madison? Gosh, I don't. I don't really do sandwiches. Um, do, do the buns, the spicy tofu buns at Umami count as a sandwich? I think we can allow that. Okay. So you um, are the second candidate we've interviewed on the show. And so far, two out of two have brought up um, an alternative type sandwich. So um, Second anyways, choice would be the um, the falafel pita from uh, the Bonzo food oh cart. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. If there was one food, one dish that you know I could only eat for the rest of my life, that would have to be up in my yeah. top choices. Um, all right. Number three, what's your favorite st- um, statue, landmark, or public art piece in Madison? You know, I <laughs> I really like the big question mark in the Central Library. Yeah. Yeah, I just think they did such a great job on that building, um, and I love how they incorporated public art into it. And I don't know if you were at the um, the Bookless event um, when they when they you know cleared out the library and had uh, that was just such an amazing they had so much public art in there and then when they reopened it they had incorporated some of that I just think they did a really great job Um, all right this is a little round of would you rather so would you rather have backyard chickens or backyard bees personally bees oh okay would you like to would you harvest the the honey and all that oh yeah for sure my mom has chickens um you know and I love getting fresh eggs but um I don't know I think uh, I'd be more comfortable with bees. Yeah. Um, would you rather drink small batch coffee, kombucha, or beer? Oh, uh, I don't drink coffee, so okay. tea, uh, <laughs> uh, but probably beer. Yeah. Um, would you rather travel around Madison by bike, bus, or car? Uh, bus, absolutely. I bus every day. Okay. Um, and would you rather go to the co-op or um, do a grow-your-own-produce situation in a backyard garden? <laughs> well, we actually have a front yard garden. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we, we, my partner Amy and I go back and forth on this every year. Like, should we plant a garden or should we just go to the farmer's market? <laughs> yes. So lately we have opted for the farmer's market. I'm always, well, if my plants make it, that's fine. But if yeah. not, I'm just going to go to the market all summer. <laughs> we have actually really successfully grown raspberries. Okay. So we're actually, we have two plum trees. Hopefully they'll start bearing fruit and we have raspberries and I think we might we have a little herb garden we might just go with the sort of perennial like yeah my herbs always die in the winter as much as I try to save them so I don't know I'm lacking a green thumb over here alas um all right um how many different Madison neighborhoods have you lived in since being in Madison you know not that many honestly I lived in um I think it uh, so I lived in Marquette and then I now I live in Eakin Park Last one for you. If you were stranded on a desert island, which book and movie would you want to have with you? Have you seen my bookshelves? <laughs> I haven't. Are they packed? <laughs> they are very packed. I really like This would be a be, tough choice. It would be very hard. Um, boy, um, there are books that I read over and over and over again. Um, it would have to be something really long. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley just because it's really long and intense and um, 
like detailed so you can read it many times and get a lot out of it. Um, That's a strategic decision if you're stranded. Oh, well, for <laughs> sure, you know, because what are you going to do? Right, exactly. <laughs> movies, I got, I got less on movies because I don't, I'm not a big movie person. I'm more of a book person myself, yeah. so that's always can, a hard question for me. Can I have two books me? instead so, of a movie and a book? Okay. Yeah. What would your second book be? I would probably do a, a history like um, – I have a book that's like a, a comprehensive history of the world. It's, you know, it's like one of those surveys. Oh, no, I know. Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States. Great. Same Great. reason. Long, yeah. detailed, lots in there to read and reread. Just become an expert on the world while you're stranded. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> well, that's the, the end of our lightning round question. Um, and this is a ne- you know different topic, but I was looking at your campaign website, and I love your dog, Leo. So <laughs> I hope I see that little guy running around town. He's <laughs> such a cutie with his little white nozzle. He's yeah. Like, yeah, he's getting old. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's was, was my do- one dog comment. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, we love Leo. He's a good guy. Yeah. Is there anything else that um, that you would like to add that I haven't asked you or that you th- you know would like uh, Madisonians to know about yourself as a candidate for mayor? You know, I think just it, Madison's such a great place to live, and I really want it to be a place where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, um, and we can do that. That's possible. Um, but we need, we need the experience and vision to make that happen. We need somebody who has political courage and isn't afraid to make big, bold moves. And, and that's me. And I hope that folks will check out my website, satyaformadison.com, S-A-T-Y-A, for Madison.com. And, and I hope that folks will vote for me on February 19th. And that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of Mad Splainers Election Edition. Be sure to tune in to our next episode coming out on Friday in which we speak to another mayoral candidate. This time it's going to be Mo Cheeks. You can subscribe to the Mad Splainers on iTunes or anywhere else you can find your podcasts. Be sure to check out the other podcasts that we do here at the Cap Times as well. We got shows like Wedge Issues, which takes a look at state politics. And we got The Corner Table, which is a show all about food and dining here in Madison. I'm Eric Lawrence, and thanks again for, for tuning in. Mm-hmm.